I knew I was going to be a singer since I was like five or something. These boobs, God bless them. They are paying for my new real estate ventures, let's just say. My warmth is from the love of my family. Keep me warm. Mommy likes to be sexy. Miss Titties USA, everyone knows these boobs. I'm on my journey. I'm doing my thing. I'm saying yes to life. I love life. I like going through shit with him. And meanwhile, you party like a wild animal. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But it seems like if they're really, really, really sick and contagious, yeah. maybe keep them home. It's just frustrating because yeah. for us, now that we have a newborn in the equation, we just saw our friends, they have a newborn and they had to be in the ER with the one and a half month old for like a week because the the other kid the brought other stuff kid home brought from stuff. daycare. So that's just yeah. like a little bit of a concern. But beyond that, um, yeah, he's a breeze. He's really sweet. And he's, uh, I can't tell if he knows. <laughs> he like kisses it when I ask him he to. He does. I, I don't feel like they do at that age he's too little you know almost too little i feel like by two three they kind of understand everything okay by two i feel like anna sophia didn't understand anything Interesting. like what was in my belly <laughs> like but i don't know was she accommodating just, to like having um, a sister or yeah she was crushing her face pushing her around and now they're best friends just Aww. like probably you and your sister were you know yeah but yeah, two, I don't know, if you come into my advice after... I will know, be, and I am. The kids, uh, second kid, I guess the change is beyond. Because if you had, you know, hands for one kid, now dad takes care of one and yeah. mom takes care of another and you have no time for yourself. Like, <clears throat> no time for yourself. You kind of like give up on yourself for a while. I'm not saying forever, but like at least like that baby stage when they have to yeah. be here, they can't walk. It's like a lot of hands. Yeah, uh, you know, you need a lot of hands. So. I want to get my strength back. I feel like I'm just on this past trip. We were in Mexico for three weeks and I was so slow in the heat. Like yeah. the baby literally at one point took two steps in the pool and went straight down to the bottom. And I was like, oh, of course, it, it was a one second Did you reaction. Jump in? We, I was in with him. I just mm -hmm. had to reach him up and mm -hmm. it was okay. He didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. But like in my mind, I was like, oh, my God, my reaction time is so slowed down. <laughs> so Nico's really had to be like super dad for everything. So I'm excited to be able to help in that capacity yeah. again i know i'll be with the with the new baby but um i think we're gonna find our balance i hope so do you have any help i i know you like raise your child yourself right now right yeah and i like really love that about <laughs> you because <laughs> you. i think a lot of my friends don't get it why i don't have help and you know my mom helps me but she travels a lot for vacations and to be with my dad obviously and then <clears> I'm alone for like three months four months and then she helps me but how do you feel about the second baby coming do will you have we help. do have the support of his, of Nico's mom. Same. She lives uh, qu kind of close by to mm -hmm. us, and she's always trying to make herself available for us, which is really helpful. She came for a week of the vacation, and it was like night and day <laughs> to have her help. She came on vacation with you yeah. guys? Yeah. Nice. We realized that we're probably going to be able to take like one family vacation a year, and we're going to really want to have like someone in the family with us to, to participate in the, in the helping of it. But um, day to day, it's just us two. Uh, sometimes we will maybe have a babysitter if we want to go out, but we kind of make it work. Like if I have a job and I have to leave for a couple of weeks, Nico will call his sister, call his mom, and he'll mm -hmm. figure out a schedule wow. where he can really take it on. And then 90% of the time it's me all day with him. And then when I uh, have like a shoot or something like that, uh, we either have help or Nico will pick up the slack. And who cleans and cooks? in your house so nico is more clean than me <clears throat> he also is a better Obviously. cook than me <laughs> um but he's really taught me like I, I used to and i'm sure you know like how we were we were we were two wild gals babe we would just be like at least i was living out of a suitcase yeah i would be sure. like wherever the next job is wherever the next trip I is know where this go. leading yeah and I never had that sense of like house pride or 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 a home like foundation oh, like in general putting yeah. roots down mm -hmm. like and he really instilled that in me like we really value how we're building our home together like before we go to bed we always make sure the kitchen's like sparkling like that's really him and it's learning process for you it right? is but i like it like i really value it now like i'm proud to say like that we really have kind of a good system yeah and it sounds simple just like cleaning up the dishes but that kind of thing like really does make you feel like when you wake up in the morning like yeah. starting a yeah. new day and yeah so he's good about that he's been teaching me a little bit to cook but i swear like especially pregnant he'll come home from work and cook me dinner it's so nice I try to do like the morning shift, like I'll do like his breakfast, make sure he takes his vitamins. And then Sounds when he so comes cute. home, he knows I'm tired. So he like, he'll usually take over the dinner. It's really nice. Okay. So going back to your self, beautiful Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> crazy ass bitch. <laughs> crazy ass bitch. Tell us a little bit of like where you came from <clears throat> and how did you end up in LA and how kind of your career, you know, where it is uh, right now. I um, grew up in Northern California. You did where? In Marin County. Okay. Just like north of the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, your Wikipedia says you're from Washington, D.C. I was born there. 
Okay, you work for it. Good of you to wiki me, babe. Um, <laughs> I love and my that. dad is German. My parents split up when I was really young, but every summer my sister and I would go to Germany to visit him. So you kind of grew up with a single mom. Yes, 100%. It was just the three of us versus the world. It was so nice. <laughs> you liked it? Was it was it at any point hard for your mom or for you guys or you didn't To be feel honest, mm -hmm. we didn't I don't remember wanting or needing for anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, we lived in like a pretty affluent area. It was only because my grandparents lived there. Mm -hmm. And so my mom wanted to be close to her mom. But we were the ones like living in a one bedroom apartment, the three of us, totally cool. We had no, yeah. uh, my mom didn't make us feel like there was anything lacking, you know? And we went to school with some kids that were like driving Hummers and to mm -hmm. BMWs mm -hmm. to school. And everyone wanted to hang out at our house because my mom was like, I don't know. She was just kind of not one of our peers, but we didn't have to hide anything from her. You know what yeah. I mean? It felt really, um, it was a cozy upbringing. And I'm so grateful that I didn't have a lot handed to me because even though of course I was comfortable and happy, like I had to leave the house at 17 and go get a job. And like that is an important part of my story that I'm like grateful for. And that's what I did at 17. I was like, I'm not interested in college, nothing. I want to start my life. I knew I was going to be a singer since I was like, five or something I knew I wanted to do it so that was the thing LA like you have to that's the next closest best place so so then when you were 17 you decided to move to LA to become a singer I did how did that go for you I was like but I'm the type of person where I could be like I will sleep on this park bench or have all my shit in my car until I figure it out like mm -hmm. I'm not I've never been for better and for worse, I've never really been like uh, so concerned about how I was going to make it happen. I just knew that I would. I had yeah. faith in myself. And so I just got a job. I was working as a hostess at a restaurant in Hollywood. And then, you know, of course you you say, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to really do the work. But of course you're kind of just young going out, yeah. networking yeah, 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 and all the yeah, things yeah. that you kind of say. Um, you're just young and wild. <laughs> yeah. And I just started meeting like a lot of different people. I was meeting a lot of different producers. I was kind of trying to figure out like what my sound was. And for a long time, I thought I was doing like an R&B thing, which I did love. And seriously, yeah. And then I um, randomly like got introduced to Scott Storch through someone I was dating. And I went there. And so I was that's why I was in Miami. And that's kind of how I know all the Miami people, because okay. at like 18, I lived there for six months and I worked on an EP with him was a whole wild ride in and of itself um and then I came back to LA same story just kind of building on my contacts writing music trying to kind of see like what it would be um then I did the whole American Idol stint and I was just like you did yeah randomly I did There's something out of that I don't know about you they the thing with American Idol is that they don't want someone who like because I knew Ryan Seacrest through another guy I had yeah. dated and like mm -hmm. he was a friend they don't want like someone who's like been in Hollywood and like sitting in the corner reading Dostoevsky. Yeah, yeah. They want someone who's like, <laughs> I'm from Kentucky and I have like mm -hmm. my golden chance. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. wasn't really that way. I didn't have they that. Want, like, like that American dream. Yeah. Kinda, and you, which is great yeah, for yeah, TV. Yeah. Love mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I wasn't really that. I was kind of like, oh, hey, like, and it was, a, it was a nice experience, very humbling and fun. Um, and then, gosh, what did I do then? I lived in LA for 10 years worked every kind of job you can imagine retail i did bottle service in the nightclubs i did all that yes i know about you <laughs> yes that's how we met all that's how i met all the girls and so you never studied anything because i think that's how you guys no. all met okay no um i never, I never <laughs> went to school so no judgment. yeah here. you said that i was yeah i wanted to know more about that because yeah. i actually feel like we never talked about that there's a lot of things we never talk about you know well you were plucked out of obscurity very quickly and like you were <laughs> on your way you knew what you were gonna do it was it was also hard i'm sure yeah it was i moved to japan and then i never finished school i never studied anything i was just trying to survive just like you i was the same sometimes i slept on the street i had no money yeah. then i'll make 300 dollars and i'm like okay i'll you know but aren't you but, so glad that that was the case yeah i mean when you're that age that me and you were you kind of just you go with it, you know, you you have no chance, you, you have no choice. Yeah. I mean, you have no choice to like, go back home. That's not an option, you know, and you just have to make it. <laughs> or you live in the street. I'm just impressed because look at where we're sitting now. Like, yeah, I'm really proud of the person you became because thanks. It's so you know, nice. we, we both were like literally in other people's eyes a party girls a oh, wild totally. girls we've been told this by dear friends <laughs> but dear friends so yeah like our good friends told you that you're a party girl no one will marry you 
And I think it really hurt you at the time, right? Which it's just so not about that. It's yeah. not about becoming some other version of yourself to fit a guy to marry you. Like that is so not where my head's at. My thing is I'm on my journey. I'm doing my thing. I'm saying yes to life. I love life. Like, and that's what's going to attract my partner. And that's what ended up happening. Like, yeah, you don't want to change I were, for someone. Absolutely not. And that's the thing that, that I was disillusioned by the comment because it made me really feel like the friend just didn't know anything about me. Because yeah. if you know me, I'm never going to fit a bill of what someone else wants me to be. That's yeah. just not who I am. Yeah. And when Nico and I met, like, we were both so wild, like our seduction phase, we call it, like we were going everywhere, like bar hopping, staying up late, you name it, like we were that way. But then when we decided to take the next step, we were like, we're ready for this new phase in our lives, which is obviously so much more tame and family oriented. And we have that too. You don't have to be one thing or the other. And so that's and, and why it also doesn't mean, you know, it like didn't, it doesn't mean you're a bad person if you're like mm -hmm. a wild like that's like sometimes like Babe, really being wild is like I love that part of my brand identity. Let's go with <laughs> no, that. No, for <laughs> sure. And I'm like like people like have told me like you you're so wild. You'll never have kids, right? Because you don't want it. I'm like, what do you mean if I like to have fun, I don't want kids? Like fuck no, off. No, you know? that's the that that aspect of you is what is probably going to be very important to your children to see that in you, that you like to have fun, that you have a well-balanced life, that you've done things. Like, can you imagine if we hadn't said yes to all those crazy things we did and then we're sitting there 45, 50 and having a like yeah, midlife so crisis? Bored. Like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy things panned out the way they did. And I, I do feel that connection with you because we have talked about that. <laughs> and it's nice to feel that we can, we're women, we can do it all. Like, there's no reason why we can't have both you know what I mean? So with the, where, where did your party girl go? <clears throat> do you party still girl? like to, do, you, do, you, do you put it into your kids or you waiting until your kids are like 10 or you just kind of like cool with your life now? No, I don't, I, between the two kids, like, yeah, I still, you know, had a martini here and there and yeah. had fun. Yeah. But I don't know. I just don't have FOMO. Like even coming back to LA, normally I'm really like, oh, I miss it here. I love LA. Like I have so many fond memories, but this time. I don't know. I'm just like, we're nesting in Canada. We're building our lives in Montreal. Like I feel I'm in a different phase. And so, no, I don't really miss it. Of course, I'm still going to once a year want to like take mushrooms with Nico when there's a babysitter. You know, of course, we'll yeah. still like yeah. be ourselves. But I don't know. It's you can't have a hangover with a baby. You can't have a you hangover really, with two babies. You can't have a hangover with a baby. Impossible. I don't even go for dinners with Brian anymore because we'd rather like <laughs> it's gonna sound so bad and nerdy, but we'd rather go on a bike ride. That's so know? sweet. And like sit on the river and just hang out with each other. Cause I know if we go out and have a martini and next day it's just ruined for the yeah. both of us. Cause we're really bad hangover people. We're just <laughs> fine, you know? It's just like, you got with kids, no, you got with kids. So we better not hangover and not tired. Yeah. However, I don't know, maybe it changes, you know, when they grow up a it, little. It will, it'll, it'll ebb and flow, I'm sure. I'm not worried. I, I don't feel like I'm missing out. Like even when you watch like people at Paris Fashion Week yeah. this time, I'm like, like oh, you just, right? <laughs> I, I want them to have fun. I mm -hmm. like that they're having fun. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't miss running around. I did it. It was so fucking fun. It was so cool. I chased around the French lesbians. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> but I'm just like, it was, I don't know. I I'm. I feel fulfilled now. Can you tell me about Nico a little bit? Because I personally met him once maybe. You met in him in Miami, right? He was on a phone call and you were with the kid and you were only there a short time. We and were I was in pregnant Wellington. too. Yeah. yeah. So you met Nico at the rave, right? So I was <laughs> in, it was December 7th. Mm -hmm. 2019 December so it was right, right after before, the holidays yeah right before mm -hmm. no just before oh December so okay right before the holidays okay and I I obviously remember the date because that's actually my due date and it's the day we got married a year after we met so it's kind of a crazy yeah. day for us um but yeah I was dragged to a party with a friend of mine where and in Miami during Art Basel Miami, during Art Basel who'd you go with Do you know Violet Chachki, fabulous yeah. drag queen uh no of course, we, he we, were dragged, drag queen. we were dragged to a party of a friend of ours and it was very much like a house thing. And I know yeah. you like that, but mm -hmm. I'm like not, I'm like a hip hop girl. Like I yeah. wanted my R&B. Yeah, hip hop girl? I like, it's it's whole new Caroline for me. I know. <laughs> um, Nico has sort of broadened my horizons on house music and stuff. But anyway, I was like, this is not my scene, but it took us so long to get there in some sh crazy shuttle bus. So I was like, <laughs> we'll have one shot. And then we see Nico sitting on a speaker 
And my friend, Violet, I mean, she was out of drag. Jason said to me at the time, like, that's the hottest guy here. Like, we need to see, is the, is he into you or is he into me? So I did literally wow. one of these. The, straight at you. Is he a little bit, like, gayish looking? <laughs> like, why? The gays love him. Gays love him. Yeah. Okay. And he came over, like, in a little, like, cloud. He says he floated over. And I was like, who do you like more, me or him? And he was like, you. And that was it. Like, ever since then, so I took you him home with me that night. You kind of went for him. Yes. I'm the aggressor. Okay. Normally. So you were uh, a first night, one night send, kind of. That's how it started. Well, interestingly enough, <laughs> everyone I've ever dated, yeah. I pretty much slept with right away. So did I. But I, I haven't pregnant. really had a one night yeah. stand. It's like, you know, when you know, you know. Oh, if it's not on, I'm not fucking you. That is such a good point. And you know? I really agree with you on that. Yeah. But I don't hold myself to any kind of like second date rule or anything like when i saw yeah, him yeah. i was like i this is an attraction like our, is, i like him i yeah. feel the energy like the yeah. first text i wrote him the next morning well i sent him a really hot selfie of like the mirror above the bed mm -hmm. a sexy nude mm -hmm. the best nude did. i ever did <laughs> and then i just said like where is my boyfriend like it was already so sure in my mind and um we hung out those two days in miami and then he happened to come to new york where i was living at the time uh, the day after Christmas. So then my mom was in town. So we met my mom. Things just moved pretty quickly. And then when the pandemic, oh, then I had a little tour, an East Coast tour, and he came with me. And it was like me and my guitar player and my manager and my makeup artist in the car together, all crammed together. <laughs> and he was with us. So I he thought it was so cute. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. was just along for the ride. Like mm -hmm. he's so, but I I'll tell you, I remember the moment when I was like, I'm going to marry this guy. It was when I got went back to New York and we had been talking nonstop. And I had had this date with this other guy planned from before because it was a date to the opera, which, of course, I really wanted to go. And he was a sweet guy. And you invited someone? No. Well, I didn't cancel the date, even though, like, Nico was the only person on my mind. Yeah. I, I still went on the date because How was it? it was La Boheme and I wanted to go and the guy was sweet. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about Nico the whole yeah. time. So when we finally talked, I said, um, you know, he's like very unironically said like so how was your night and i knew he could tell because it was like a seven hour period really? we didn't talk mm. and i said you know to be honest i did go on a date but i couldn't stop thinking about you and um his answer was the thing that like made me realize he said i'm going to take this opportunity to tell you that you don't owe me anything and i'm not your boyfriend <gasps> but i don't want to see other people and i feel some type of way about you having gone on that date like i'm upset Mm -hmm. And it was just so honest. Like, who the fuck is nice and honest like that? Yeah. Like, Other guys would have been like, oh, I'm going to get this pussy then if you're doing that. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I, I mean, I guess it's fucking Canada. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but I was so surprised. I was like, this guy's honest. And, and so nice. And yeah. Like, it's such a, like, He fresh... wasn't putting pressure on me yeah. either. He's not like, you have to be this thing for me. Yeah. Or... It was so refreshing. So that's when I was like, okay, that's it. And then I went to go visit him um, in February just before everything went crazy with the pandemic. And... And that's when you moved to Canada. Yeah, when the pandemic yeah. started, I literally March twelfth, I mm -hmm. had a flight there with one suitcase. I ended and you up never left. living there for six months. He had this little studio apartment. We were like, this should be scary, but it's actually fun. We would. There you was had a good time. We yeah, mm -hmm. we were like kids again. And then that was it. I was just fast tracked to. Then we got married a year later, that same day that we met. Okay, so it went fast. So tell me a little bit, be, you know, because I met you what five years ago. It's that short? I, maybe you're right. No, it was because we you came on my 30th birthday to the Bahamas, and that was our first, like, and now you're big hangout. <laughs> and now I'm going to be 36 at the end of the month. So, okay, six years ago. So, I guess six years ago, and you were in relationships. He didn't really let you be yourself a little bit, right? So, how is Nico kind of deals with you and lets you be you? It's funny because, I, in retrospect, I realize now that you can have so much love for someone and really be in love. But unless you're understanding the way that they need to be loved, love languages, love for languages, instance, yeah. um, it might not resonate. And it's that's what the frustration comes from because there is love and it's real and it's important. I know, you guys were so cute and but you both are really nice and no one kind of like upset at each other. Yeah. It just didn't work out. Yeah, I think for I, I should have been a little... Um, more soft with it i think i was really aggressively like i am who i am and yeah, thank yeah. god for that i wouldn't change yeah. who i am but um i should i i look I, I know a lot more now that i look back on it but okay it so was, you think it, it that relationship actually taught you something that you absolutely. may be corrected in your uh next relationships yeah, with Nico, right? i just couldn't understand why if we because we, we were friends for so long before yeah. we dated 
friends for 15 years. Like you had all the chance in the world to see who I am. Yeah. So I felt like now you're trying to come and tell me to change it. Uh, don't wear this. Don't say this. Don't uh, try this thing. Oh, I saw you well, smoking a he's cigarette. He's like super Latin, you know, maybe yeah. it's in their blood a little bit. You know? In his way, I think that was his way to try to be really loving and, mm -hmm. and kind of uh, look out for me, I guess. But, you know, that's why when I met Nico, I, I don't know, and I hate to compare. I don't mean to do that. But it was the first time I felt so free in in being loved by someone. Is it just so easy? It's easy. You guys? Do you it's fight? It's easy. We we fought when the baby came for the first two weeks. We almost broke up after second baby. It's it's, yeah, it's so, hard. because you're just so tired and so exhausted. You know, you don't have the conversation of you have a lot of conversations when you're courting each other, but you never yeah. talk about like what do you think of formula? You know, you don't talk <laughs> about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And like for me, the formula was the devil. I don't know why. Yeah. And now I don't think that, of course. But did you breastfeed? I did, but it took a long time for the milk to come. So those okay. five days I while I was breathing, you had a hard. Oh, I couldn't get them to him to latch, I remember. so I, I remember. had to only yeah. pump for six months. Mm -hmm. I was still grateful he had my milk. That was the most important thing. But Nico's over there like, hi, the baby needs something to eat. And I'm like, formula's the devil and we're all going to die. And he's like, okay, but the baby has to eat something. And I was like, how dare you not understand? And yeah. it's like, he, I'm, I'm now I'm grateful that we have those differences. But even though, yes, we co sometimes come to a head with things, I like going through shit with him. <clears throat> I like figuring out what to do with him. Like, I like to be thrust into a situation where I'm not sure how it's going to work out and we have to sort of not argue, but talk it through. Yeah. I like doing it with well, him. Well, it's healthy to argue and it's healthy to have healthy kind of fights, you yes. know? Like, I um, want to learn to be more accommodating for yeah. him and and learn how what he needs. Like, that's exciting to me just because of our... So do you people. think because you learn so much from your previous relationships, you kind of change a little bit for nico isn't or, that ironic because I, I, the minute someone's not telling you yeah i change, need you to change they, yeah is the minute you want to be more accommodating to their needs i know I and think, that that is true that did happen for sure i think it comes with age a little bit too you know when you're 25 you're like this is who i am take me and then you know yes like, i was so that way i was hard-headed I mean, yeah. like that yeah like even with brian like you know sometimes this is me, but then, like, you know, I have to learn things that makes me more grown up, right? Yeah. We have to. I think, yes, it, to, to go back to the thing of, like, yeah. is there arguments that I think, for me, what I've found is that getting along is not a problem. Mm. Life happens at us, and mm -hmm. we face it together, and that's not always easy. And we do have disagreements. But we don't disagree about getting along and respecting each other. And that is such a godsend. I feel so blessed for that. I say I'm lucky and I'm blessed, but I also saw those qualities in him and chose him for that reason. Yeah. Like, he obviously chose me too. But like, I keep saying, oh, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. No, I manifested it and I was like, manifested it. Yeah. my daddy issues are flying out the window. <laughs> I'm stopping the pattern here with you. And I chose that. So I'm proud of myself that I, it's amazing. even through my party girl phase, as they say, <laughs> like I knew who I was, I knew what I wanted and I just waited for it. I'm really proud of myself for that and meanwhile you party like a wild animal oh, fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so you moved to canada and it's a huge move like all your life you knew it was in la in new york yeah so tell us what do you do now tell us about the move tell us about canada i feel safe there mm -hmm. i <clears throat> don't want to be like a fair weather american and just say like it got weird yeah. trump etc it really got i'm weird. out yeah but I, it wasn't because of that necessarily. I did obviously move for love and it happened that way, but I feel very safe there. Um, obviously it's nice, the idea that I have free healthcare. I'm finally a permanent resident, so I have mm -hmm. those um, benefits. Um, of course it's a big adjustment, but that's just in my nature. I'm the kind of person like, I, you know how it is too, you've yeah. traveled your whole life. Like I can just kind of go, like Shay and I would do fashion week for the, those huge, like six weeks or whatever and she'd be so like I need to get back to my routine and I was like but we can extend and go here like yeah. I just always I didn't understand that feeling now I have more of a sense of like yeah. roots and foundation and home because so you I had kids that. and you need it but yeah. for me to move there I was like where do you live yes <laughs> and they have a sick food scene there so I'm well fed and I'm very happy it's only an hour from New York aren't you cold I'm cold <laughs> but like coats are fabulous I have so many nice coats, coats so I can wear them 
You're right. Uh, I did have a caveat, though. I said to him, like, can we please spend a little time in L.A. between yeah. February and March? when it, It's yeah. six months of winter. I need it's really cold. you to know. Everyone to know. Is this... I'm like, who is there? I need everyone to know. It is six uh, months of winter. Audience. It is Arctic. In June this year, I wore a puffer jacket. That's offensive. I was like, I did. In when? Time. In January? In June. In June. What? I know. I was, that was rude of them. Well, um, I moved to Aspen now and it's, what is it now? November? You had a cold summer there. I felt like I saw that. No, summer was really hot. Okay. But now it's starting to get cold and I'm not ready for it at all it's a big that is a big shift but you know we're we're nesting the first baby came in the winter this baby's coming in the winter like so so it's cozy yeah it's cozy. it's cozy i'm okay with it people are saying like how did you move from california but again like my warmth is so cheesy oh my god uh, my warmth is from the love of my family keeps we, me warm we say so many cheesy on this podcast things that <laughs> Don't be ashamed of that. It's true though. Everything is so cliche, but now I understand why people keep repeating them. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like you have kids and they make you just so happy. Like your yeah. heart just, you don't give a fuck, you know, yeah. about like the money, about like the fashion weeks, about any of this crap, you know? Yeah. But you never finished your story. So how did you become like a fashion icon? I, I, I remember That's you went... so from, nice of you to even say that. I remember, <laughs> I remember you went from, you know, obviously you have your singing, but then... Kareen Rothfeld really fell into you, right? And I know she also yeah. like was such a big part of your career too. Oh my gosh, it's about you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but still. Um, she was. She was really supportive of my career and I'm really grateful for that. She just, I don't know why, she kind of just gave me like that chance, you know? I wasn't like necessarily a CR girl forever, but yeah. like we did the calendar together, which was so fun. But how did you go from, you know, LA to a fashion scene? I was very, um, very adamant about making a name for myself that mm -hmm. had nothing to do with being mm -hmm. related to Diana Vreeland. Yeah. I wanted Which to be... Which is your grandmother, right? Great grandmother. Oh, it's a great grandmother. Yeah. Okay. She was in The 70s, mother of my but... grandfather. The mother of your grandfather. Okay. And she was editor-in-chief of American Vogue yeah. in the 60s, right? Exactly. In 60s. Okay. And Harper's Bazaar, too. Yeah. Um, and she kind of started the, the everything, the costume stuff at the Met. At and, the Met. Yeah, I read that. Um, do you think it shaped you in s some kind of way? or It definitely did because I was, like I said, I was so anti getting my foot in the door. Before we had the term Nepo baby, like that Nepo whole thing. Nepo baby, yeah. I was you don't like, want to be a Nepo baby. I just wanted to make my own thing. I wanted mm -hmm. to do my own, have my own sound, have my own voice, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. And when my team said, why are you not? You using know, that using, name. Mm -hmm. using your access to this world, this elite world of fashion, yeah. like why won't, wouldn't we use that to promote the music? And so I said, okay, that seems reasonable. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. So then I signed with Next and kind of with like their talent board. And that's when everything started to kind of flow together because... Next agency you, model name. Yeah, here. Um, I must have been 23 or something mm -hmm. like that. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to do editorials. I'm going to do jobs with brands. And that's when I started to realize I'm much, I felt like I was much more, I was a character more so than just. You're a, not a model. They'll probably kick you out of the set. Oh, you know? the, a thousand yeah. percent. The first, <laughs> the first shoot I had was for uh, Vogue Italia and it was with Michelle Comte and he, mm -hmm. poor guy, he stood there staring at me through the class when I, had, I was getting my hair done for two hours. And finally he said like, I'm sorry, but I just can't. It was a bikini shoot. And the other girl was like, S yeah, had a model. Yes, at normal. That time. No, no, mm -hmm. not normal, yeah. but model style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were. I was looking at the rack, and I was like, I don't know how they think anything is going to even remotely cover one sliver of my areola. Like that's just not. What happening. is your boob size now that you're pregnant? Oh, <laughs> Big Mama is like up to like 36 G. I'd say G. Before I was like a 32, 34 F. F. So you over yeah. D's, over D. double D's, triple over four D's. times D. <laughs> Throw some D's on it. <laughs> um, we we'll love ugh, the D. They are, but uh, let's, I mean, we should get into that because these boobs, God bless them. They what? are paying for my new real estate ventures, let's just say. Okay, so. Because. Because, do you want to talk about I, it? I've been, I'm okay. excited to. So. Forget the fashion, forget well, the singing. After you move to Canada, I'm going to lead it to it. After you move to Canada, you needed to make money, right? Yes. Because you have a big family now. I know your husband works really, really hard, but I know you like to work too. It's so important to me. I wouldn't be comfortable not having like my own 
thing and with all the brand jobs and stuff that it led to and yeah. fashion and everything, mm -hmm. I was used to doing really well for myself, yeah. you know? And yeah, I remember. To the point where I think I almost emasculated some men that I had dated because <laughs> that's a hard thing, you yeah. know, to see like a girl like killing it like that. And um, so when the pandemic hit, it wasn't like I'm out of money and I need to figure out what I'm yeah. going to do. You know me, I have always wanted to be like sexy mommy. Like mommy likes to be sexy. You like to and be sexy. I, but yeah. I would do it for free on my Instagram. Yeah. I would post like, you know, lingerie and like implied nudes and everything. on my. And I love that. Like I love my body and especially now pregnant, I'm like feeling the best. I just love to show it. it it's, it's never been a taboo thing for me. Um, so when someone was like, oh, you should do OnlyFans, I was like, yeah, but there's such a sexual like stigma with like sex work and everything. And where would I fit into that? Because I wouldn't be showing that kind of thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see what happens with it. Newsflash, <laughs> best thing I ever fucking did. Um, for the first, so I've started three years ago. For the first three years, I never showed anything. But everyone was like, but you, I mean, you and you I. You started OnlyFans. You and I were nude in the yeah. CR calendar. Yeah, we were. Uh, there's been editors, magazines I shall not name right here, but we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Um, I was told, you know, we're, yes, you're shooting with nothing, but yeah. there will be a censored bar over everything. Oh. Cut to the magazine comes out. It's full. I'm fully my tits. Hmm. But the point is to say that I started to realize that I had been, I even did the piece in purple where I wrote the, the article about pregnancy. Um, that was beautiful pictures. They were like naked, but you, you were like not naked. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah. And, and so for me, I was like, well, why would I be putting something like that out there for free? when I'm not getting, I mean, of course I'm getting something out of it, but I'm not really getting a financial gain out of it. So just two months ago, I decided I'm going to show them because you know what? They're fucking hot. They look great. <laughs> oh I'm 35. Like they look amazing. And I'm proud. Like, and Nico shoots it for me. He I literally can. like gets a boner while we shoot. It's like sexy. We love it. <laughs> He's like, you're such a badass bitch. Like you're literally shooting once a week or twice a week and, and wait, you're able to be with your child. You're doing it pregnant as well. Oh. So my main thing is doing it when I'm pregnant. And people are into That's it? That's what they like. Wow. I don't know. I think it's me too. I think I exude this sense of, because um, it's so much more than just like gratuitous sex. Yeah. Plus I'm choosing everything how the shoot is. Like yeah. I do a Marie Antoinette theme. Like we do like a sexy dominatrix latex so thing. So that's the shoots that you've been doing lately. So yes. I was wondering, what is she shooting? You know, the It's baby always bump. for that. So wait, you started OnlyFans about how many years ago? Three years ago. Three years ago, and that's been paying your bills. Way more than any huge contract from any big brand I ever worked with, and I was killing it. So you're killing it, you make shitloads of money on OnlyFans, and you're raising your family in well, Canada. Well, now <laughs> the plan is to invest everything in, we're going to start doing real estate. Okay. So, well, um, hold on. We, we really want to know about it. So two months ago, you showed your, just your breasts. Just, yes. Okay. So Okay, so you're still keeping the, the bottom part yeah, the, to yourself. There's no need for that. <laughs> okay. At least not yet. Um, well, bravo. What can I Thank say? Um, it feels so good. Wow. I'm like, again, like who knows what will happen with this baby? Like he'll be yeah. suckling at the teat. Yeah. These things could go crazy. Who yeah. knows? But for now, like I literally feel so beautiful. I feel so like beautiful. the height of my femininity. I feel sexy. I feel energized by it it's fun like i get to be in control of it you know we yeah i have an all-girl team like we yeah. have our little glam moments we choose we make a mood board we choose what we want to do and it's fucking fun and it's it enables me to live the life i want and i mean i know in my control i know some of the girls make like ridiculous amount of money on it like yeah. ridiculous yeah <laughs> like, it's great should I start it's only just, fans? Like, honestly. I'm saying it's great. It can be whatever you want it to yeah. be. Yeah, I know. A lot of girls that I know, I think, could kill it on there, but they wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole because yeah. of, like, the stigma that it has. But in my – it works so well for us. We're so happy with it. Like, I, I couldn't be happier. It's I think it's really it's brave, and I think it's very now. Like, the woman um, can do whatever fuck she wants, and no one have to apologize for it, they, you know? I was doing it for free in yeah. fashion magazines or doing it for free on my Instagram, so why not have, like, a place yeah. where people who yeah. really are committed to seeing the things that I put yeah. out are offering that? Like, I it's mean, a it's a that, great... That's, that's actually a good point. Like, my boobs is out there on the internet, and yeah. what do I get out of it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of how I started to feel. And yep. on the days when I'm like, wait, is this the right thing to do? Nico's always like, 
what do you want to do? I'm like, raise my babies and watch Love Island on the couch. He's like, <gasps> you it. have you have that situation set up for yourself. You're a boss. Yeah. Like it, it, having his support really helps. Like I could not have done it. He doesn't judge you. He loves it. Oh, he's into it. He's into it. He would not be involved in it, but like he well, likes yeah, maybe the that's photos too much, yeah. and he likes the support <laughs> that I'm doing it. Is People he like ask a, for that. It, well, I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I mean, maybe that's the next step. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know if I could ever take it that Throw it out there. <laughs> but is he a good photographer? He is. Was he always into photography? Please log on and take a look. Now I'll show mm -hmm. you. I mean, you have the other two probably who are going to log on over here. <laughs> no? Not I don't think fans? I have a... Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. They're like, not pregnant lady. Too young for oh, that. Oh, no. Pregnancy, I swear to God, it's like the most erotic... I, not erotic because you don't yeah. want to sexualize it, yeah. but... I really do feel yeah. so fucking feminine yeah. and it's, it works. Yes. What are you going to do with your boobs after they? I'm going to come to you for advice. I don't yeah. know. Like you've had two, you tell me what happens. I'm well, not sure. Actually, I'd never shared that, but it's not really a big secret. I did have a breast lift after. After the second? Mm -hmm. or... After the second. So, you know, my boobs were also big, not as yeah, big as I yours, remember. you know, <laughs> but they were a good size. And after two breastfeeding for, you know, long, long time, they were kind of low yeah so I lifted them I'm very happy about it I'm so scared to go under the knife but mm -hmm. like I it also I know that I want to be able to like take yeah. take not take it back but like yeah. kind of feel that re yeah. well they're not of... gonna look like this after breastfeeding because when you're pregnant it's, they're just like full oh, you know, know. they're and... literally bur I can't even like keep them inside any of what's <laughs> happening here but maybe, you know, maybe yours, because they're so big, maybe nothing will happen to them. But I think eventually, I think it was one of the best things I ever done in my life. Really? Like yeah. I'm it's just, so glad you felt it had a good result yeah. from it. It's just like, I have, you know, a T scars, which is from breast lift. I didn't do it to, to enlarge my boobs or Under. Anything. It was under, it's around the nipple, and it's down. So oh, it's, does it's, that? Yeah. It's, it's a big very scar. visible. I will go um, in the bathroom and take a yeah, look. Yeah, I, I can show you. Please. One of the breasts like healed really well, and the other one they have to kind of just cut the skin and fix it a little bit because you, you never know how it will heal. Yeah. Um, but it's the best thing I've done. I feel so good in my body. Good. My husband loves it. Again, he just like plays with. I'm like, don't squeeze too much. <laughs> oh, you might pop. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's probably the best thing I've done. So if you ever feel like you kind of want that again i always thought like maybe i would yeah. consider getting a reduction all my life i kind of thought of that mm -hmm. but um i don't know what will happen i'm just kind yeah. of taking we'll see i mean you're so far away from that at least two years like you can't really do anything for we'll see three months and then another. <laughs> well my doctor in miami is amazing dr selena's i was not promoting anyone but i've met every doctor in l.a and like I've met him and it was just love at first sight. <laughs> He's amazing, yeah. So, Maybe I'll have to, I don't know what'll happen, but we'll see. I feel like they have been such an integral part of like my, it's funny when you're kind of known for your boobs. Yeah. And that's why the, that's why the <laughs> breastfeeding thing was so hard for me because yeah. I was like, here I am, Miss Titties, USA, everyone <laughs> knows these boobs. And then they're not doing the one thing that yeah. like they're meant to do. And that's why I was so it's kind of crazy huh? about it. Yeah. It was hard. But of course, then the milk started to come. And once I accepted that I was just pumping and that was yeah. it, it was OK. But I'm really hoping I can get the new baby to, to latch on and listen. Do that. This is kind of our other topic of the conversation. But the two kids, they're so different. He's going to be so different. Your delivery is going to be so different. Oh my God, I cannot wait to way, see what's going to be like. The, the way he's going to be, it's so different. The, the way he's going to walk, the way he's going to like crawl and eat and do Weird. everything. Like Gia even moves different, you know what I mean? Even the way you hold him when they're baby. Honestly, he was like all long and linking. Gia all like squishy. Like it is so different. It's funny because we never really knew what is baby behavior and what is yeah. Miro's personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what he we're going to get to see. He crazy like you, you know what I mean? Miro might be Let's for it <laughs> we all need a little bit of it yeah, yeah Miro's yeah. so chill he's definitely dad energy he's definitely a daddy's boy he is sometimes wow it was kind of hard for me to be honest because yeah. I'm like why don't you need me more yeah. when he needs comfort he goes straight to Nico yeah but then I'm like I'm obsessed with Nico and he came out of me so clearly he's gonna be obsessed he with really, me he has obsessed with me, but, yeah. but I think obviously those things shift and change but also I'm thrilled that he has a good relationship with his dad I never had a close relationship with my dad so 
for me to see that, I'm like, that's a blessing. That, and that Nico is feels really that good way. at that, right? Literally, when they have this crazy thing in Canada, which yeah. I didn't even know existed, mm -hmm. called the CLSC. Mm -hmm. And like, they literally came to, it's like this nice older woman who's a nurse. She shows up at your house to check on you after the baby comes. Like, nice. I was like, who is this? And they care <laughs> if I'm alive or dead. Not used to that in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, even when she came and she was looking through her notes, oh, Caroline, Caroline, oh yes, you're the one with the attentive husband. Aww. Like that is the note she wrote down. Be because they, they do care about the de uh, depression. They were like, we see, yeah. that's what mm -hmm. it was. They were coming yeah. to check, <clears throat> which sure. by the way, I've never felt a depressed yeah. day in my life. I'm a very optimistic, positive person. I don't even ask you this question because I didn't think so. When the baby <laughs> came, no, but I had it. I What? Yeah, you I did. I did. I Stop I, it. It was only two weeks. Wow. But, um, what was it for you? Uh, I heard so I've heard from people in my life who I know go through depression. I've heard the example be made that it's like being in the bottom of a hole that you can't climb out of. And I never could resonate with that. I never understood that when the, those first two weeks happened and the breastfeeding thing wasn't working out. You, you were I felt behind. I felt mm -hmm. like we're 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 running out of time. Yeah, we're not in a race. Like, yeah. who are we? Wait, who's there? I do, it was not a rational thought. But it was that just was... your guilt about, yes. especially your boobs, because it's you. Your boobs is you. You know what I mean? You're a mom now. Yeah. Like, why can't you do why the you thing can... you're supposed to do? Yeah. Keep the baby alive? Yeah. Hello, if there wasn't formula, would my baby be dead? Like, I had such... Yeah. And then Nico and I, like I said, we were arguing about the formula, and so it was challenging, but I had never known those dark, those depths. It went away after the sleep came back and everything, thank yeah. God. This sleep but deprivation is, is... I have a whole newfound yeah. appreciation for that because <laughs> like you can't talk yourself out of it. No. It was so weird mm -hmm. that yeah. my whole life I was like, it's all good. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. And with this, I was like, I think he'll die and I think I'll die. It was such a strange thing. Now that I know that that won't happen and now that I know there's a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully yeah. I won't feel the same. But, but you know, real. second baby might just latch on this second He's born, you know. Tell You're us a little hoping. bit about your experience with delivery. So <laughs> I was that bitch that was like, I'm from LA. Yeah. I don't want anything. I don't even want an IV. I'm going to yeah. do it like I was watching sure. those orgasmic birth and yeah, all that sure. shit. I was like, put me out back on my hands and knees. Yeah. Like I even told my doctor who's like an angel and she was the best yeah. ever. How dare you tell me that you just want to give me to give birth on my back because it's more convenient for your positioning. And she's like, well, yeah, Caroline, but we do that because that's how we learn to anticipate the issues. Yeah. God forbid something goes wrong. Yeah. That's how we know how to intervene, yeah, yeah, yeah. not from behind, upside yeah. down. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. So yeah. anyway, I went in. I didn't have anything going on. I did like four hours of contractions. You never told me about the story, so I'm really excited. Well, what it. happened was I did. It was the it was the his due date was two two twenty two. And so on that night, I did acupuncture, like the lower back mm -hmm. acupuncture that when you want them to, when you're yeah. ready. Mm -hmm. And my doctor said, you know, the baby's big. We don't want to wait too, too long. But we didn't know just how big he was going to be. She was thought- Was your belly super big huge. at that point? Huge. Yeah. Okay. He, they thought he would be eight pounds. He was 10.1 pounds. I know. And he came out on the day of. So if they imagine yeah. two weeks later would have been- He was on his due date or you got induced? I didn't get induced. I felt that my water had broken. I thought something was dripping. Okay. I mean- <laughs> something let's water. be honest it's constantly wet down there yeah. i'm always either peeing and a coughing sneezing peeing we were just talking about it every time oh. i i i don't want still to now the, no i i sneeze every time i sneeze i pee myself thank you so sometimes it drips all the way down the yeah, pant leg and sure. you're standing there thinking <laughs> what kind of slug have i become but anyway we're working on our kegels no there is a, there is a treatment now that i was explaining an hour ago the, it's like looks like an ultrasound they put it in there and it tightens everything. It's kind of like a laser, like you do for your face to tighten it. Huh. It's, it's for your uh, muscles. I may need this because we, we all need <laughs> I did the the pelvic floor specialist, and I I know I should be doing it now. As he I goes, look at you do, doing the Wait, tightening. It's, it's like it's annoying to do them, no? It's it's counterintuitive because you're supposed to inhale at the time you release, or it's it's not the way you think it should be. We're both doing them now. <laughs> Um, but I so I, uh, I, I, but I knew something different was dripping. I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think my water's broken. And my doctor was like, just go into the triage in the hospital yeah. and just see. And I literally had my beanie and my car keys, nothing else. I didn't yeah. have the hospital bag or any of that mm -hmm. shit. And she was like, the water is like one of the layers of the sack yeah. is 
broken and we have to go into labor now because otherwise it's unhealthy. I'd been having sex and being in the bathtub and stuff. So you have, she said so it was, it could be an infection. Yeah. So mm -hmm. she said like best that we tear it and we yeah. fully, and you go in. Tearing is kind of hurts, huh? It, I didn't really, uh, it was right after that when the contraction started that I was like, <laughs> I told Nico like before anything happened, I was really calm. I said, we had just moved into our house and I said, I will need a, this long list of items. Please go to this box on the left for the eye makeup remover out of this bag. And I was so you were precise. already in a hospital? I was, yeah, I, this okay. is when we knew we were gonna start the, okay. the labor then. Mm -hmm. Cut to the contraction start. I was like, I don't care what the fuck you bring. You yeah. get your ass back here yeah, now. Yeah. He's like driving, like flying yeah. on the roads. Um, but I did four hours of the contractions and then I begged on my hands and knees for that epidural, which I said- How many I centimeters you were at that point? Really, I was really dilated. I don't know at that point what I was, maybe six or seven. Mm -hmm. I was already pretty far. Yeah. And so that's why I felt more comfortable getting the epidural because I had heard the horror stories of women who aren't dilating fast, yeah. they get the epidural and then they just don't dilate. Yeah. That would, And then that leads to obviously maybe to a C-section in some cases. So that's what I was nervous about. But they were like, you're, you're steadily, even with the epidural, I was still- You're dilating, yeah. everything is going good and it, it happened, you know. I even had my last OnlyFans shoot like <laughs> one or two weeks before the birth. And I remember saying to the girls- so pregnancy is a really like a thing? Oh, totally, yeah. They love is, it. Is there and I love other it. pregnant? I don't know. I haven't there? explored that. You're the only one. I, I, that would be a good niche for me. I have not explored because, that. Because not to interrupt you about your, you know, birth story, but Brian hates pregnant women. He thinks they're. It's a thi yeah, it's there's a thing. some people that are very. He couldn't touch me. We didn't have sex. From babe, the we were on vacation. The... I heard you going, yeah, Brian, down the hall. Like you guys were having okay, sex. I was like barely pregnant. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when I had the belly, belly, I was like three months pregnant. I was like so cute. It was like. I, because I, they're scared they're going to hurt the baby. Nico sometimes know. says that. But then I know other men who are like weirdly it. obsessed with it. Yeah, it's it, a was, thing. Was it, you know? So maybe, maybe I'm out there repulsing some folks and maybe some some folks are into it. Maybe but they're like, ew, but kind of hot, you know? I've done polls and stuff on there to mm -hmm. ask people like what they prefer. Yeah. And that's always very high up there. Really? Like wow. number one. Okay, um, so you are in a hospital, you're six centimeters dilated. Yeah, um, so how did you push the ten pound baby? Out that of was your the vagina? easy part. For some reason, the pushing was easy. It was the, it was the contractions that I couldn't bear. I don't know how you did that yeah. without having them. That the drugs. anything. That once I had the drugs, I was like laughing with the nurses, like yeah. pull out my Kodak from my thing and take a picture of my birth canal, baby. Like they were like, what? I was resting. Like mm -hmm. it was a different story, yeah. and I couldn't have done it without that. But the pushing was forty five minutes. I. The thing that happened was I had made Nico watch all those videos of like badass birth mother because mm -hmm. I wanted him to see breach. I wanted him to see shit coming out of the butt. Ew. I wanted him to see everything so that he was desensitized. Did anything happen to you? Yeah. I, um, really? They claimed that, no, they claimed that there was no nothing. I was like, something's for sure coming out there. They were like, nope. No. Mm -mm. Uh, I did tear a lot, but not, you know where you I did? Didn't, I didn't tear down because he had done the massage oh, yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. For like the, we're gonna start it when we get back for the, like the next two weeks. <laughs> Brian sorry, refused doing it. <laughs> we would be watching like Ted Lasso. He's like down yeah. there like this. Like he's, like, it's not sexy. But no. that that was the one area I didn't tear. I tore up. What? Up near the clit. Oh. Up. But the head. Is so it more in, sensitive now? Um, or the same? It's the same. I feel. Did they stitch you? That's where, <laughs> yes, they did. And, um, but that's. That's what happened was so I so I, I'll just say that um, I had him watch all those videos because I wanted him to see that and see what could happen. Yeah. And when I watched them, I saw that once the head comes out, for the most part, the body just slithers out. Yeah. So I was like, you tell me when the head's coming out. Plus, I had a mirror I could see. I when said, the head is coming out. Then I know no that I'm almost done. Oh but gosh. Miro was so big on his shoulders. He got stuck on his shoulders. Oh, it happens that they have to. So they had to kind of what? pull him out like that and he had this little brachial plexus thing where he mm -hmm. had the little hand i was so out of it i could would never have noticed but nico was like something's wrong he grew out of it and we did like it back well it was a nerve thing that they it was injured <gasps> here so it injured him all the way down Babe. and he totally outgrew it we did little practices bending and stuff and now he's no, he's normal hands so but, scared of that that it would happen to one of my kids and it happened to you i had no it was, idea yeah it was scary because that happens when the mother is like on the smaller side and the baby's big and now they told me i should be careful it might happen again so you we'll know they kind of like a break a shoulder they kind of dislocate the shoulder for the baby to come out that's i think yeah. maybe the territory we were in yeah. when it was mm -hmm. happening 
And then no one told me that the minute they're on you and everyone's look, look at the baby. I'm like, I don't see shit right now. Like I'm like looking at Nico, like, is everything good? Yeah. And then they start sewing. I didn't know that extra stitch is happening. Oh, but I didn't get the extra stitch. Oh yeah. I but did. just the stitches where like the tearing, I couldn't feel it, but I was like, yo, you guys like, I know you're near my clit because that yeah. part I can feel, but you, like, you, you could, I couldn't feel pain, stitching. but I could feel pressure. And I knew that they were near that area. Yeah. It's a weird area to be. So when you were recovering, did it hurt to go to the bathroom or anything? Or it was just, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. Um, and I did that little sits bath thing. That was nice to have yeah. 15 minutes where you yeah. just sit there and you soak your puss. Mine wasn't so bad. I had one or two, one or two stitches and Good. that was it. Yeah. And then the second one, second one, uh, yeah, nothing. Nothing happened. It's it's all stretched. <laughs> I know. That's the thing that's different now. I'm like, I used to have this cute yeah. little like, yeah, no. Mm -mm. And now it's like a roaring yeah. big mm -hmm. thing with like, yeah. it's like a muscle, you know? Yeah. No, we need so to different. go and do that that thing, the ultrasound thing, <laughs> that ultrasound. You have to keep me <laughs> updated thing. on like the latest. I will. I will. Things for that because. Okay. So babe, how do you feel that your relationships with your uh, group friends changed after having a baby? It's totally different. Yeah. It totally changed. Um, I, you just don't really feel that you have time to, to talk about those other things that you used to talk about with friends that don't have kids. Like, yeah. I'm not holding it against them that they yeah. don't like get no, where I'm sure at. Or not yet. But it's totally a separating factor. Of course, the good close friends will always make an effort and come see you. I know I moved to Canada. It's kind of far um, and hard to come. But the people who have wanted to be a part of my life, even if they're not in the same level as me, like with parenting and stuff, they still made an effort to come. So, but you do sort of see who does and who doesn't. And it's to totally changed it. And now I'm like, closer with like my neighbor and my Canadian friends who have kids or like, <laughs> like being able yeah. to call you for advice. Yeah. Like it definitely changed it, but I, I don't have any resentment towards that. I, I wouldn't have understood if I w didn't have kids and my other friend did, like I wouldn't have understood how to, you know, you sent me that that video of the girl saying like, well, what does it need? Like talking about the baby, like an <laughs> yeah. it, it but does like, feel that's like how my that. friends act sometimes who have no yeah. kids. They're like, oh, you were like so like a chicken with your kids like just who cares if they were like toxic sunscreen or not they'll like be okay you know and i'm like no, well you can't like, tell people how to parent that's like a yeah, big thing i learned that's like, that's like something like could like break it for me you know yeah. like don't tell me how to parent my you know children like. yeah <laughs> it, it it definitely changed and and i think that's okay i think friendships can can ebb and flow and you can find yourself distanced a little bit from someone you might have been really close yeah. to for many years and that's okay. You know, it's not always, sometimes it is painful and you're like, well, why hasn't yeah. this person visited me or yeah. my son? Yeah. But I'm, they're on their own journey too. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Maybe one day have kids still. On this They'll day. understand. <laughs> yeah. So you're happy. Very. You seem really happy and I'm really proud of you. Again, you. I'm really proud of both of us, the two party animals. <laughs> <laughs> you know have this beautiful kids yeah and i don't want people to think like you have to be stuck in one thing of what I, people yeah. think of you that's so not it it's so fun do everything yeah. try everything say yes to life yeah, like for sure trust yourself even after you have kids you know you have your only fans journey whatever it is for me or for svetlana or other girl you know <laughs> it's just you have to do what's in your heart and yeah. stay true to yourself really important and Very. be a good mother which you're an amazing mother and you're an amazing wife and I'm really, really proud of you. And I'm happy you found someone who accepts you for who you are. You know, it's rare, but when yeah. you find it, you have to stick with that because you you don't want to spend your whole time trying to fit into their impression of you or what they want of you. That's not a life, at least not for me. But also, you don't have to think about what other people think of you, right? I live in Canada now, man. I wear Uggs every day. <laughs> I'm like, think what you want. I, st I moved there with all my stuff. I started to go on the cobblestones with all my heels and people were like, that's not, you did. Yeah. It's not a thing there. People are not dressed up there, not no. at all. Aspen is the same. I wear Uggs Did you think day. we would end up in like that's why quiet like, air towns? No. It's not quiet towns, but, but not I mean, LA, like, New York. Imagine us in the mountains or you're like in Canada. I love it's, us. It's, it's just like, yeah. Oh, we're gonna like, we're gonna buy our cottage. The boys are gonna have like nature. Like it's gonna be yeah, a whole different life. You and know, I love that. You would never have thought that. Kids should play with leaves and like they should never go to fucking Disneyland. Oh, I told, I told like, Nico, I was like, I want them to come home with like a stinky worm and be like, yeah, I got you sure. a worm. I would say sure. throw the worm out, but I'll be very glad. You can there. dry them and make like things, arts and crafts. <laughs> Why not?
<laughs> Babe, thank you so much for joining. It means thank a lot you. for us to have you here and love you. Love you too.